Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create custom gradients in Google Slides and Google Drawings. Let's jump right in. On the screen here you can see some examples of some of the built-in gradients as well as some of the custom gradients you can create using Google Drawings and Google Slides. And I want to show you because I didn't know that this existed until somebody pointed it out to me. And I want to give a big shout out to Mike Downs. If you follow me, make sure you follow him as well on YouTube, and I'll put a link in the description. Thank you, Mike, for pointing this out to me. Let's jump over here to Google Slides so I can show you it works the same way in both Google Drawings and in Google Slides. And first of all, I'm just going to create a few shapes. Let's just start with a square. I'll draw in a square, and I'll remove the outline or the border. And under the fill color, I'll drop that down. And the second option right next to solid is gradient. We can click on that and down towards the bottom, you can see custom. If you click on that, it opens up a new window where you can customize your gradient fill. You can create all kinds of unique, interesting gradient fills that will color your shapes in whole new ways. We've got linear gradients and radial gradients. This is a lot like the free tool that I've highlighted before in one of my videos from Angry Tools, Gradient Image Generator, which is a way that I've used to generate assets that I use for myself. Well, I might not need to use that as much now that we have gradients or now that I know that this exists inside Google Drawings and Slides. You can customize these gradients. So right now we just have a, uh, a linear gradient that goes from a medium grade to a darker gray. Well, these points at either end can be changed. The colors of those swatches or stops can be changed. You can hover over this paint bucket tool and you can see select gradient stop color. These are called stops. And I have this first one selected here. I'm just going to make that black and go to the one here on the right and again, click on my paint bucket color to change the color of that gradient stop. And I'm going to make it white. So now we have a 90 degree linear gradient going from black all the way to white. And I click OK and it fills that shape with that gradient color. Now, because this is a vector shape, I can resize it. I can change it. I can shrink it way down, make it this nice little sliver if I want to. All different ways to use your vector shapes inside Google Slides and Drawings. Now being able to customize these gradient fills. Well, let's do something more interesting. Let's go back to our gradient menu, click on custom again. And just a note, just like on our custom colors, for example, if we paste in a hex code to save those custom colors in our document, this will also keep track of our custom gradients so that we can easily select them to apply to other shapes. So I'm going to just click on custom again to change this gradient. The cool thing about adding stops is that these can be different colors. So maybe I want a bright blue and maybe I want also a red. And look at how interesting and unique this gradient has now become. I can create a new shape, maybe a circle this time, drag that out on the screen. Then again, we'll go to our fill color, select gradients. And here we have right underneath the word custom, our custom gradients that we can now apply just like swatches. This is looking very abstract, but it doesn't just work with basic shapes. It also works with word art. Now I use word art a lot, especially for big headlines or title graphics or logos. And so if I go under the insert menu, I will find word art. And this is where custom gradients gets very interesting and very powerful. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try something. I'll type in the word Chrome. Since we're using Google Chrome, I'll type in the word Chrome and let's pick a big chunky font like Anton here. Again, get rid of the stroke, make that transparent. And then we'll go to our fill color, that little paint bucket icon, choose gradient. Let's go to custom. And I want to create something that looks like polished Chrome. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'll select my first stop. We're just doing a linear gradient at 90 degrees. I'll select my first stop and let's make this almost white. Maybe the third one in here, I'll make it almost white right up there at the top. I'll add a new stop and it adds it right there in the center. I'll make this one a little bit darker. I'll add yet another stop and I'm going to push this one right up against 
that center one. So we have this sharp line, almost like a seam right down there, or a reflection. I'm going to make this color a dark gray. Then I'll select my last stop here and again make this something very, very light. So we have this nice transition, light at the top, dark in the middle, and then fading out to another very light gray at the bottom. Kind of like chrome looks when sunlight is hitting it and it creates this reflection on top. Now that's pretty cool. We can go into our format options and just apply a drop shadow. And now we have something very interesting. Let's also apply a reflection. And you can see the visual interest that we can start creating. So here's some word art that looks like Chrome. Let's just copy the circle and apply that same gradient. Now we have a circle that looks Chromish. How about a diamond shape? Let's apply our same gradient there as well. In any of these shapes, you can also apply your reflections or drop shadows. This also works with backgrounds. So I'll just click on my backgrounds, click on the color swatch here, choose gradient, and let's make it our custom gradient here. Being able to craft those gradients and where those transitions, where those color stops are positioned within your gradient really gives you a lot of control and a lot of power with your designs. And I think that's just really great. I want to show you one way that I would use these gradients. I'll just draw in another square here, a rectangle. I'll turn off my stroke, select my paint bucket tool, go to gradients. We'll click on custom once again, leave it on linear. And on my first stop here, I'm going to make this transparent. On my second stop here, I'll make it black. Now we have a semi-transparent shape that we can manipulate and change and use. I use these kinds of gradients more as a utility, something that will help me in my designs create contrast or interest. So I'm just going to copy this. We'll create a new slide and let's just make something using this new gradient tool. We couldn't do this before, at least not that I was aware of. So I'll create a new slide. Let's get rid of the filler content. For my background, I'm going to pull in a texture. So I'm going to choose image and let's just search Google for a stone texture. We'll find something interesting in here. We'll just select that. And that fills my background with that image. Now I can paste in my semi-transparent gradient here, which is now completely created inside Google Slides here. And I'm just stretching it across the entire canvas. So now I have this darker, more mysterious area towards the bottom and this brighter area where I can still see my image behind it, this, this texture behind it. What this really helps me be able to do is take something like this word Chrome, Let's paste it right on top of here. We'll go to arrange, center it on the page horizontally and center it vertically. And let's just make it larger. So without this gradient on top of our background image, you see that it's much harder to read. I don't wanna completely cover up that image and I do this quite often in my designs. So using this semi-transparent gradient gives me some interest and I can just paste it back in, move it to the back and it sits on top of that image giving us a lot of visual interest as well as contrast for reading stuff. So this is definitely a way that I'll be using these custom gradients in Google Slides and Google Drawings. But I also love that it works with word art so that we can create all kinds of very interesting things. I think that combined with, mm, let's just go and create a new slide here and have some fun. Combined with uh, the, the Google font repository inside these applications, will give you some very interesting results. Let's go ahead and create some new word art and let's type in the word fire. And we will find maybe mm -hmm, interesting font like this. Center it on the page, make our stroke transparent. Go to our fill options, click on gradient, go to custom and let's create a gradient that reminds us of fire. So we'll make a linear gradient. Maybe the top one will be red and towards the bottom on our second swatch, it'll be this bright yellow, something like that. Now our background can also share that gradient 
right here and create something very interesting here. Now let's go to our format options. We'll add a drop shadow and that's pretty cool, but we can actually change this shadow into a glow and I'll just select white. We'll bring our transparency all the way down, move our blur radius up a little bit, maybe take our distance down. We won't mess with the angle right now. So we have this very subtle but effective glow around the word fire. Again, we're just using now some of the built-in tools and features in Google Slides and Google Drawings. This works exactly the same way in Google Drawings. In fact, I'll just copy this word fire. Now we're here in Google Drawings. I'm just going to select everything and move it off of the canvas. Paste in the word fire. And now we have the word fire. It copied our font. It copied our gradient fill and it copied our glow in another document, just in another tab. So I think these are some really, really powerful and useful features in Google Drive suite of applications that uh, you should probably give it a shot. In this video, I'm just combining the custom gradient feature with some of the format options like the drop shadow and reflection to create some graphic design work. Thank you guys for watching. Bye for now.